Hi, welcome to MP Nomination Training. In this video, I will show you how to submit a nomination, the My Applications and Program Overview dashboards, and how to run reports. We have made the portal easier to use and more streamlined based on your feedback. I hope you enjoy. Our journey begins with an email, like the one on screen, sent to your MP Parliament House address one that ends at aph.gov.au. The email will look like this and it will include instructions on how to complete the nomination. In step one there is a link and it will include your electorate name and nomination portal link. This is your personal link to create a nomination. It is tied to your electorate and automatically links you to the program so there are no more invitation codes. Do note, because it is tied to your electorate, you cannot share it. You can click this link to access the portal. You will need to sign in using the APH email and password. But if you'd like, now is a great time to bookmark that link. Right, let's sign in. You will be taken to your My Applications screen. If this is your first application, you'll go straight to the New Application screen. To submit a nomination, we can click the New Application button at the top. This includes some instructions. Let's scroll down and click Continue. This screen has already been filled based upon the link that you have clicked. So it's got your Member of Parliament ID and information and all you need to do is select your program. There will only be one available because this link only opens up Stronger Communities Program Round 7. If this link did not work and you still have to fill in a Member of Parliament ID and an invitation code, then what you can do is stay logged into this one, go back to the email and click the link again and that will instance it correctly the second time. If you still have an issue, you may need to contact the program team. Let's continue. Eligibility is our way of assessing if the nomination meets the program guidelines. I'm going to go ahead and answer these questions in the positive. Now we need your MP electorate office address. If it doesn't come up in the autofill, you can click enter manually and put in the details there. You'll also need to enter a postal address, but if it's the same, you can click the checkbox. Let's continue. After we've known a little bit about the MP, we need to know some information on the nominee, that is the person who is receiving funding. Now we've entered in both the organisation details and the address. Now we need to enter a nominee contact. This is the person who is going to be in contact with us to receive the funding. So it's absolutely critical that this information is correct. If the email address is not correct, we'll send out the application to the wrong email and then the nominee will not be able to access their funding. So it is very important that all of these details are correct. If you have missed any sections, it will come up in red. Okay, we have the who, now we need the what. What are you looking to fund? We need a project name and details here. We'll also need a location, where the project is taking place. And you also need to enter in what percentage of the project is expected to be undertaken at this site. There are multiple project locations, you can click add another address. The total between all of them must be equal to 100%. At least one of these locations must be located within your electorate. You can use the national map at nationalmap.gov.au for details on how to confirm that the location is in your electorate. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. You'll need to use the MP link 
the national map available in the portal user guide to MPs. Then enter in the location that you're looking for and select it from the drop down menu. You will need to zoom out and then select the marker by left clicking on it. You will then have this section that says Common Electoral Divisions called Little Chevron. Clicking that will show you which electorate the marker is in. So now that we've confirmed that the location is in the electorate of Adelaide, let's go back to our form. We have a reason for nomination. And then we save and continue. We have the who and the what, now we need how much. We need to know how much the project will cost and how much funding is required. The first table on this screen refers to the project cost. That is all of the costs associated with the project regardless of who is paying for it. The project today is going to cost $2,500. You'll notice that the top and the bottom sections are greyed out and cannot be edited. These are totals. When we have projects that have more complicated costs, and they are very useful for companies. However, right now we only have the one field. Scrolling down, we can see the total Commonwealth funding sought. This is the money that is requested for the project. This is tied to the expenditure based on the rules of the program. Put in an invalid amount, it will try and validate it, but it will run into an error. And explain what this error is so that you can fix it up. Once all the errors have been resolved, the Save and Continue button will turn blue. Conflicts of interest do not have to be real to be a threat. Please be mindful that any perceived conflict to the MP or any of the staff in the MP's office could feasibly make a headline. So to avoid scandals, please disclose any potential or real conflicts of interest and in how you will mitigate these. For example, please make sure that your management is appropriate to the perceived or real conflict of interest. Now we have the primary contact. Please do not use the Use My Details button. In an MP nomination, we ask that your primary contact be a member of staff other than the MP who will be managing the nomination. The MP will already be receiving all emails and details, so please put another person down here. Finally, we have the declaration. Please read through the declaration, select the checkbox to agree to it, and then submit. Congratulations! The nomination has now been submitted. If you wish to see the status of your nominations, you can do so from the My Applications page, which is the first tab on the middle at the top. Here you can see the status of all the different nominations that have gone through. While they are still in the early stages, they will have the Federal Member of Parliament Office tag. But once you have submitted it and the system has finished processing it, the name of the application summary will change to that of the nominee. Any applications that have been created as a result of your nomination will also be visible here. You can see the applications, but you cannot edit them. If you need to edit a nomination that you have already submitted, you will need to contact the project team in the Grant Opportunity Guidelines. You can also view the status of a program that you have submitted nominations for by clicking the My Program Overview button in the top. You can select Program, click Get Overview, see the details. This will show you the total amount of funding that is available to you. This is the funding limit. That's the total amount that's ever able to be spent. The funds committed is the amount that has already been spent. The funds available are the funds that still remain, so the funds that you have not yet spent. The funds pending show how much is currently being reviewed. Some programs also have an application limit. The summary in my program overview will have the number of applications that have been submitted as well as the total number of applications that can be submitted. We can see here that although there is still $24,000 available, no further applications can be submitted. From the my program overview page, once you have selected a program, you can also run a report. There are a number of different reports that you can select. The application decision will show you the status of the application itself. We can change the number of entry or we can go to the next page, applicable. Sometimes there will be columns that go over the limit, so we can use this horizontal search bar to view the columns on the right. Another one is the nomination without application. This will show you the nominations that have not yet completed their application. This is where you have nominated a nominee, but they have not completed their end of the customer portal. It will also give you contact names, emails, and details to help you contact people who have not yet completed their application. 
Thank you for listening to this MP nomination training video. I hope you've enjoyed and perhaps even picked up some skills along the way. Thank you very much.